Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's show, Kyle Bauer visits with Randy Gordon with the National Feed and Grain Association, then enjoy this week's Kansas soybean update. Next, Dwayne Taves and Kurt Covington with Farmer Mac discuss markets. Then it's this week's Angus Report, and we'll end with Plain Talk featuring Kyle Bauer and Dwayne Taves. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first today, Kyle Bauer is joined by Randy Gordon with the National Feed and Grain Association. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer, visiting with Randy Gordon. He's with the National Feed and Grain Association. Randy, tell us uh, who your members are. Our members, uh, Kyle, are the grain elevators, grain processors, feed manufacturers, uh, flour millers, corn millers, uh, corn processors, and the exporters that take uh, farmer's grain and turn it into food and fuel and feed. Well, and certainly uh, those people that handle those bulk commodities, um, they have certain things that uh, they have to look into that the farmer takes for granted they just happen. What are some of the things right now? Well, the uh, huge issue for a lot of us in agriculture, including the farmer community, is uh, related to trade and the importance particularly of the North American Free Trade Agreement as we see those negotiations continuing. And we've seen a tremendous increase in U.S. agricultural exports to both Canada and Mexico over the course of NAFTA's history, 23 years, about a 450 percent increase in our exports to those two countries. Uh, Mexico is our number one corn market right now. Uh, For beef, it's 27 percent. Canada and Mexico of total exports of beef and 40 percent of our uh, pork goes to those two countries. So maintaining and doing no harm to agriculture is really an important message that all of us are singing from the same song sheet from the agricultural community. Certainly your members have put in huge investment in order to handle more uh, bushels of grain uh, that the farmers are producing, but the government needs to invest in infrastructure as well. Very much so, and in our greatest need from an agricultural standpoint right now, uh, from a marketing standpoint, is our inland waterways, locks and dams, and most of those on the upper Illinois or the Illinois River system and the upper Mississippi are well past their 50-year lifespan. We've seen increased uh, breakdowns of those locks, about a 700 percent increase over the last 10 years in unplanned stoppages because of breakdowns. Uh, so we're really hopeful as part of any infrastructure package that the administration and Congress hopefully will enact after tax reform will include some significant uh, investment in the inland waterways uh, to improve those. Uh, right now is a 50-50 cost share, so the industry pays and, and our farmer customers pay 50 percent of the cost through a barge fuel user fee, uh, and the federal government pays the other 50%, and we think that's a great example of a public-private partnership that's working, Uh, but we would like to see the federal government step up, and frankly, in the White House right now, there's a little different mentality of looking at lockage fees, which we think would drive traffic off the river system, and that's, again, we we send about 60% of our exports down the inland waterway system, uh, corn and beans in particular, So it's very important that we maintain that and not drive those into the the truck side or the rail side, which where we have capacity constraints. We're visiting with Randy Gordon. He's with the National Grain and Feed Association. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. 
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store, covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Brad Parker, Director of Communications with the Kansas Soybean Commission, is joining us. And uh, Brad, as always, it comes up where you have commissioners at large positions uh, that come up as well for your Kansas Soybean Commission. Uh, what is the timeline that they look at, and when are these usually? When, when do they usually come up? Yeah, the commissioners at large terms coincide with the election cycle of the single commissioner we have for districts one, two, and three out west, and that process currently is underway. So it's time to recruit at large applicants. Any qualified soybean farmer can apply for the at large positions through February twenty eight. And then the commissioners will fill both positions during their regular meeting, March 16. Uh, the appointees will then take their seats on the commission at the August 17 meeting and serve three-year terms. Pretty simple qualification. Yeah, to qualify, an applicant must be a Kansas resident, at least 18 years old, and growing soybeans within the last three years. So as interested individuals are identified... The commission, to the best of its ability, will ensure the eventual appointees reflect the diversity of those programs uh, it serves. So that is in terms of farm size, experience, production methods, marketing strategies, and, and other distinguishing factors. So if there's a producer out there that's interested, what would be some of their duties? Well, our volunteer soybean commissioners make important decisions uh, for the industry. They attend commission meetings in March, August, and December every year. They participate in conference calls between those meetings, and then they represent the industry to others. So the checkoff reimburses them for travel and other expenses related to their service, but they also gain leadership and communication skills as they network with other industry stakeholders and leaders across the country. So if there is a producer that's interested in, in wanting to do this, once again, that deadline is February 28th. If they'd like to do that, uh, what's the best way they can do that? Well, they can get more information and the application form at kansassoybeans.org slash form on the web or by calling the office at 877-KS-SOYBEAN. That's 877-577-6923. And that is for the commissioner at large positions. They can apply for that through February the 28th. Brad, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. That is Brad Parker, Director of Communications with the Kansas Soybean Commission, as he joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more with Dwayne Taves and Kurt Covington with Farmer Mac. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy.
What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns, and how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. I'm Derek Sawyer, and I'm a fourth-generation Kansas farmer. I've known all my life I wanted to farm this land near McPherson, which was my grandfather's before me. I'm Katie Sawyer, a journalist who never dreamed I'd live my life on the farm until I met Derek. We've married our worlds to help educate consumers about the rural lifestyle and all that farmers do to provide safe and affordable food. Watch our story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now let's talk economic outlook with Dwayne Taves and Kurt Covington with Farmer Mac. Dwayne Taves joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with Kurt Covington with Farmer Mac. And uh, Kurt, uh, talking about uh, ag economy, big picture of things, uh, what's the perspective that, uh, that you're putting for, uh, for bankers and others in the lending industry to look at? Well, uh, I think the best way to put it, it's the, the, the year of the unexpected coming up in 2018. We've kicked this can down the road in 2015 and 16 for uh, corn growers and bean growers. High yields have kind of kept the balance sheet in shape for most of these growers, but I think 2018 is likely to be a different story. So now's the time for, for borrowers to prepare for their meetings with their lenders, and it's time for the lenders to prepare for their meetings with their borrowers. We think about uh, the coordination and the impact of that. Uh, communication, uh, folks are going to have to be honest and open and, and really uh, kind of looking inward to see uh, uh, where do we go from here and, and making these operations work. Yeah, I mean, I guess the easiest way to put this, right, is uh, you, can only kick the, you can only kick the can down the road so far and you can't sweep the problem underneath the rug. But uh, where it's going to go from here is that lenders need to be prepared to talk to their bankers. And that means, um, you know, number one, provide a good set of financial records for that lender. Uh, and then give them kind of a, a roadmap of what uh, you see for your uh, farming operation in 2018. Uh, some people will, uh, would call that a budget or a projection. I just simply call it um, good communication between you and your banker, telling them what your expectations are for what you're going to spend that year, including living expenses, capital expenditures, and the like, and what your expectations are for marketing. One of the big pieces that I think gets missed uh, in a lot of these conversations is how do you expect to market your crop? And I know there's a lot of pressure on some of these farmers to carry their 2017 crop into the uh, long into the 2018 crop year. It's just one good reminder for borrowers that there's a lender on the other side of that decision, and you got to think about what, how they're going to feel about that. So there's got to be a convincing story to tell. We think about that, uh, the opportunity that, uh, that they're trying to be judicious stewards of someone else's money as well when they lend that to our growers, and, and it's uh, the expectation that that money will be returned at some point in time. Yeah, there's an old saying. Uh, I lent you cash. I'd like to get paid back in cash, right? And so I think 2018, again, I think is going to be one of those years, uh, you know, uh, where, and I, and I would put it this way, is that most lenders are preparing and understand that farmers are in distress in, in, in parts of the Midwest. We ourselves have seen that. We've seen a rise a bit in our delinquencies, and we've seen some troubled assets on our books as well. But in the end, I think most farmers need to, you know, own up to the problems that they have and to, to talk honestly and truthfully with their lender about that and understand that it's not the lender's job necessarily to fix your problem, but if you've, if you've laid out what the issues are and you've laid them out clearly, a good banker who's in it during the good times is going to help you out during the bad times. Our thanks to Kurt Covington with Farmer Mac joining us on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after these messages for this week's Angus Report. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, 
make those things work better for that grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Trust and leadership are critical to success at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center in Manhattan. Just ask Coach Bill Snyder. People of the Regenerative Center do care about others. I've been highly impressed with those people that have that vested interest and in try to help people become better. The center really is a, a wonderful thing here in Manhattan, first of its kind. And we're on the cutting edge of what lies ahead. Find out more about the trusted leader in stem cell therapy at KansasRMC.com. Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Angus Report. Shop, click, buy. The progression of online shopping has evolved into a mainstay that looks like it's changing the way we grocery shop, including the way we purchase beef. So you're hearing a lot of buzz today around the Amazon Primes and Amazon Fresh more specifically, looking at some of the meal kits and um, Hello Fresh and Blue Apron, others that are delivering um, foods right there at home. So it's really a, a landscape that's continuing to change and evolve. And so right now, um, the, we have been continuing to look at what is happening in that landscape and where fresh meat fits in within within that portfolio. Does today's consumer want beef delivered to their door? Not quite yet. That's according to Gallup surveys that show 84% of consumers still have not purchased groceries online. And when you think about that, you're hearing a lot of buzz, but the reality is they're still not willing to go there for their groceries. Um, then when you look on farther down into that basket, they're certainly not willing yet um, to put their dollars towards fresh meats, fresh produce, because they, they still want to be able to go into the store, be able to touch, to feel, to, to see the freshness of that product. And so it's an interesting landscape right now from that standpoint, knowing that consumers are absolutely interested and are ever more connected to their mobile devices and being able to make those transactions right online. Um, but we still need to see how it's going to play out when it comes to um, you know the meat case and being able to, to take those fresh products to home. While today's beef consumer still wants to pick out their own roast, they enjoy using digital aids to make shopping as quick and easy as possible. We also see a lot of our retail partners, our, the Certified Angus Beef brand retail partners, that are looking at how they continue to, to provide that convenience to their shoppers. And so you see a lot of those that are doing the click load and goes, or you know you can have all your products listed out and send that in, and then you just you know drive by the curb and pick it up on your way home, or some of them are even delivering out to their shoppers. So they're continuing to look at the space and figure out how they can blend all of that together to make sure that they're meeting their, their shoppers that are increasingly busy. The shift in buying requires consumers to depend on their trust in brands, relying on familiar sources when selecting products online instead of in person. The certified Angus beef brand is working to build that digital relationship. We have um, several different ways that we're trying to engage our consumers, going more directly to consumers with resources that allow them to have the confidence in the kitchen. Um, when we look at providing apps like the Roast Perfect app, a tool that you put in how much beef you need to purchase or how many people you want to serve, and it calculates what roast you should be looking at and does all the hard work for you. So you put that into your mobile device, you go home, and voila, you have that perfect roast roast for your family for a holiday or any other day of the week and and honestly just giving them some of that confidence. They also spotlight convenience items to help the time crunch consumer. I'm Bob Cervera. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. Welcome 
welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70 after all is America's Main Street and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me you know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800 760 4964. Welcome to R-Bar B, 8,000 plus square feet western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's R-Bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. R-Bar B, where western is a way of life. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to today on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the clicky Dwayne Taves. <laughs> I double clicked right you were there. Double clutching, buddy. Double clutch it. Double clutch. What is the purpose of double clutching, by the way? Oh, I knew you were too young to remember that. Yeah. Some of the old trucks, you had to push in on the clutch and put it into neutral and then let it out and push it in again in order to put it in gear. Really? Yeah, I mean, for those who don't drive stick shifts, you know, you just put yeah. down the clutch and pull it from first gear into second gear. Right. But in the old trucks, you had to double clutch them. Huh. Yeah. Had to get it to well, neutral. you learned something today, buddy. I'm so proud. I'm so Yeah, happy. I think one time I drove a truck that had to be double clutched, but it was more of a novelty. I wasn't doing it for a purpose in life. Right. I think, I mean, right. you know, I wasn't Didn't have hauling to. something right. Yeah. But it was, you had to double clutch them. Your fact or fiction, Kyle Bauer, the average woman uses her height in lipstick every five years. Ah. Fact or fiction. The average woman doesn't even use lipstick anymore. Um, fiction. Uh, it says it's true. That's not true. Now I'm thinking, how could that possibly be? A, <clears throat> I don't know if it's the gals I run around with, but I don't think many of them actually use lipstick That's my point. to start with. That's my point. When was the Second last Second of all, did they actually it? use it, or did they break it, or they lost it, or they or they the just rode on somebody's car with the it. Co or <laughs> or yeah. the mirror. <laughs> or the color isn't in vogue anymore. Yeah. See, so you're going to give me a win on that one? No, because it says it right says here. It right it's there. in print. It says it right <clears throat> there. I will tell you the height and lipstick. funniest That's thing. a lot of lipstick, boy. The funniest thing, I, the funniest <laughs> prank I ever pulled was um, I have had the stem cell treatment on my knees. Okay. Okay. And, uh, which for is those, no prank. <laughs> no, that's not a prank. And, and you start out that process. They do liposuction on the fat on your back. And of course, yeah. everybody says it's like, well, they should have taken it off your front. I'd have think yeah, it'd have helped. Well, I don't know why they do the back, but they do. And so then they put some enzymes with that, spin it down, get out the fat cell or the um, stem cells, right. and then re-inject them into the bad joints. Okay. To the places they want them to go to work. Right. Well, so then when I, when you leave, um, and none of this is covered by insurance, so they really treat you like a real customer. Oh, you know, yeah. They treat you like you're important. <laughs> yeah. You know, and when you leave, you get this little goodie bag of stuff. Sure. You know, and you get to walk out with this little goodie bag of stuff. And <laughs> Feeling as I good get about home, what you spent. My family's looking through my goodie bag. They're plundering my, really? my goodies. Really? Yeah, they're looking Your through. Your stuff, and they went yeah, through I it. Yeah, I was the one who paid the fee and went <laughs> through the procedure, and they're looking right. through to see what goodies they could get. And here was a bag of chapstick. Or okay. pa I mean, a little Tube? thing of chapstick in there. And, and, of course, it had the name of the business on there. And, and they said, well, what is this? And I said, well, when you're done with the liposuction, anything they don't need for the stem cell, they just put it in that little tube to put on your lips. 
Boy, they dropped that and backed <laughs> away and ran off. Nobody was interested any longer. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I'm Jamie Bloom, and I'll see you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.